today on Rappler. The Philippines Anti-Graft Court suspends Juan Ponce Enrile as senator. The Liberal Party scrambles to understand President Aquino's reversal of his position on charter change. And Malaysia declares a day of mourning as the bodies of MH17 victims arrive in Kuala Lumpur. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The Philippines Anti-Graph Court, the Sandigan Bayan, suspends Juan Ponce Enrile as senator Friday. The court also rejected Enrile's motion for reconsideration. The Senate should implement Enrile's suspension within five days. Senate President Frank Drilon says the Senate will abide by the court decision. Enrile's suspension will be lifted after 90 days. Enrile, along with Senators Bong Revilla and Jingoy Estrada, faces plunder and graft charges for the alleged siphoning of public funds for ghost projects ran by alleged masterminds. Janet Napolis. Budget Secretary and Liberal Party stalwart Florencio Abad scrambles to understand President Benigno Aquino's changing position on charter change. Abad on Friday tells Rappler there may be an intense exchange of ideas given the seriousness of the topic. He adds charter change will involve revisiting the basic legal framework of a society whose main reason for being is to cir circumscribe the vast powers of government. LP officials are also expected to discuss whether there are compelling reasons for charter change. There's no date for the meeting yet. Party mate and Senate President Frank Drillon earlier said he endorsed Abad's suggestion to, quote, put the issue to rest. Drillon also said there are no talks on pushing for charter change. Aquino said in a TV interview that he would listen to the public regarding an extended term, but also said it does not mean he will pursue it. Currently, the Constitution bars the re-election of a president after one six-year term. Aquino said he changed his position after a clash with the judiciary made him realize there may be a need to balance, in his words, the three branches of government. Antigraph Court, Sandigan Bayan, grants the request of former first gentleman Mike Arroyo to go on a European trip. Arroyo faces graft charges for the anomalous sale of secondhand helicopters to the Philippine National Police during the administration of his wife, former president and now Pampanga representative Gloria Arroyo. In his motion, Arroyo's lawyers told the court he was permitted to travel in the past and had proven he is not a flight risk. Based on his itinerary, Arroyo will visit Munich, Germany, Milan, Italy, and Hong Kong. From September 21 to October 10. State Weather Agency Pagasa spots a low pressure area around 200 kilometers northeast of Virac, Catanduanes. In its 5 p.m. bulletin Friday, Pagasa also says Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon will have cloudy skies along with light to moderate rain showers and possible thunderstorms. The rest of the Philippines will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies and isolated rain showers or thunderstorms mostly in the afternoon or evening. Check out Rappler's Project Agos Microsite, a one-stop shop to help the public prepare better for disasters. Project Agos aims to raise awareness about climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction and management. You can see what to do before, during, and after natural disasters like floods and earthquakes. Visit www.rappler.com slash Project Agos. In a unanimous decision, Indonesia's Constitutional Court on Thursday rejected former General Prabowo Subianto's lawsuit challenging the results of the presidential election last July 9. Chief Justice Hamdan Zuelva said the court rejects Prabowo's allegations of massive structural and systematic electoral fraud. There were no dissenting opinions from nine justices. The decision affirmed the General Elections Commission, or KPU's, declaration that former Jakarta Governor Joko Widodo, or Jokowi, and running mate Yusuf Kala won the divisive presidential election. Jokowi and Kala got 53.15% of the total votes with an 8.4 million lead over Prabowo and running mate Hatta Rajasa. Shortly after the court's verdict, Prabowo team spokesperson said while the court decision was final, they believed it was not just. Pro Prabowo supporters protested outside the constitutional court, causing about uh, 4,000 police to guard the premises. Protesters tried to break through the barricade and police responded with water cannons and tear gas. Situation quickly calmed down, but a number of the protesters were arrested. 
Malaysians pause for a minute of silence Friday for a nationwide day of mourning as they welcome home the remains of 20 of 43 of its citizens killed in the Malaysia Airline Flight 17 last July 17th. There were 298 passengers on board the Amsterdam Kuala Lumpur flight. Flags are flown at half-mast to remember those who died when MH17 was blasted from the sky by a surface-to-air missile in Ukraine. Malaysian authorities ask citizens to refrain from festive activities. Many commuters in the bustling streets of Kuala Lumpur wear black in mourning. Dozens of Malaysia Airlines cabin crew and pilots gathered in their blue uniforms, holding Malaysian flags and flowers to honor their 15 colleagues. The tragedy compounded the country's grief over the still-missing MH370 with 239 on board. That happened four months earlier. U.S. defense leaders say ISIS, or the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, poses a greater danger than a conventional terrorist group. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel and General Martin Dempsey say ISIS vision could radically alter the face of the Middle East. Hagel warns the public that ISIS is beyond anything the Americans had seen. He says ISIS is better armed, trained, and funded than any recent militant threat as it marries ideology and a sophistication of strategic and tactical military prowess. Dempsey says that the group adheres to a fanatical ideology and has a long-term vision to take over Lebanon, Israel, and Kuwait. Asked if the U.S. would hit the militants in neighboring Syria, Hegel did not rule out the option. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, researchers at Harvard University say women who eat instant noodles at least twice a week face greater risk of high blood pressure, elevated blood sugar, and high cholesterol. The Journal of Nutrition says consumption of instant noodles is associated with increased prevalence of metabolic syndrome in women, independent of major dietary patterns. It doesn't matter if women eight healthy meals if they eat instant noodles twice weekly, they're at higher health risk. At number eight, American diplomats won't be able to join the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Latest trend to hit the internet tags people to either pledge $100 to Lou Gehrig's disease research or drench themselves with ice cold water. State Department Deputy Spokeswoman Marie Harf says federal government ethics prevent diplomats from using their position for private gain, no matter how worthy the cause. And at number 10, a U.S. judge rules the song Loca, popularized by Colombian pop star Shakira in 2010, is an illegal copy of a tune written by a Dominican musician in 1998. Ramon Arias Vasquez testifies he wrote the song between 1996 and 1998 and presented as evidence a cassette on which it was recorded. Artist El Cata said he owned the song when he performed it and it became a hit. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com. It's the rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally. If you take a look, these 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. Um, let's see here. Uh, the jihadist, embarrassing to Muslims. This is ISIS, 64% angry. Aquino government to continue graph ridden train project with China, 22% angry, 38% happy, and 9% annoyed. That purple bringing out the store, the mood in the story that's gotten the most number of votes. Smart called out for 5G technology ads, 38% angry, 52% annoyed. That purple bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are annoyed. Now that's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, August 22, 2014. Don't be annoyed, it's Friday. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.